He's handing them to anybody that will take them. He's handing those cards out saying, you know, here, this is my name and this is what I've got and please come see us. You know, we're good at what we do. And um, it was impressive to watch. It was very impressive because that is what the American dream is. <laughs> Um, I'm Debbie Buckingham and I own a salon in Woodenville, Washington in the Woodenville Mall called the Sense of Style. And I, uh, my mm -hmm. salon is situated right next to Chop It Up. So I got to know Mervis within weeks of us both signing our leases in the Woodenville Mall. It was an interesting day the day I met him. Well, that day I uh, had just pretty much gotten the keys to the uh, space that I was going to build my salon in and so I thought well I just wanted to do something there was nothing in here it was just an empty space so I went outside to wash the outside of the windows just to feel like I was doing something and a car pulled up and out steps this young 21 year old skinny guy with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth <laughs> and uh, he told me he was actually going to lease the space next to me and uh, I wasn't real sure about that. I thought, oh, what are you going to put in next door? <laughs> and he said, I'm putting in a barber shop. I said, a barber shop? And he said, yep. He said, I uh, have an idea. And he goes, I wanna, I wanna give it a try here and the woman that owns this shopping center is gonna give him a chance. And he was very excited about it and he was really looking at that space and wondering whether it was going to be the right place for him or not and and uh, I was nervous in all honesty I was nervous because I thought oh my gosh we couldn't be any more opposite he was a young black man about 21 years old and I was an old white woman at 45 he looked like he had a lot of energy and I had very little left <laughs> so uh, that's when our adventure began he had very limited amounts of money and I could kind of tell just from his age he just wasn't financially <laughs> rolling in the money and so I knew from my experience of having to build out this salon the kind of funds it takes to put in a business and so my question was how is this young 21 year old man going to build this barber shop what will it look like and what does he have in mind and uh, the thing that instantly it didn't take long to figure out. He had very strong ideas of how he wanted that barbershop built. And you realize really quickly that he was willing to do whatever it took to make that work. And his dad was very supportive, very supportive the whole time that he was over there. He was with him for months, if not longer really, to make sure that his dreams about. Well, the thing that I remember the most when Mervis came in next door was that the space was the space was just empty and he didn't have the ability to go out and buy flooring or uh, brand new barber chairs or a brand new pool table or uh, any fancy TVs. So I remember him painting the floor in uh, the, the barber shop. I remember that. I remember uh, the every time he got a little funds, you knew it because he immediately tried to put those funds to use, whether it meant buying another used barbed barber chair or um, going to, down to the hardware store and putting up his, you know, wood and mirrors and whatever it took to get it going in, in the barber shop next door. He did whatever he had to do. He would go out in the parking lot, and I remember he had these, uh, uh, they were like a postcard and he had his, all about his barbershop and everything but he would literally walk around out in the parking lot and he would hand them to anybody that was getting out of their car he'd introduce himself give them the card would love to see in the barbershop and I used to think he 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 has 
no limits. This young man is willing to do whatever it takes. If it's, you know, being there till midnight, you know, whatever he has to do, painting the floor of his barber shop, buying, just upgrading from one chair to the next is exciting for him because it means that he's getting closer to the things he's dreaming of. And walking out, there's not too many young men would walk out in a parking lot. He's handing them to anybody that will take them. He's handing those cards out saying, you know, here, this is my name and this is what I've got and please come see us. You know, we're good at what we do. And um, it was impressive to watch. It was very impressive because that is what the American dream is. And it's showing you what you can do when you have a dream. It's just one step at a time. You don't arrive there in one day. And he didn't. And he's still arriving. He still has dreams. He still has ambition. It's very inspirational. Very. To see where that barbershop started and where he's gone with it is really, when you're right there watching it every minute, it is, it's very inspirational. It's what you want all young people to see. You can be and do anything you want to be if you have a dream and you, you know, you can't beat a guy that doesn't give up. You can't beat him. And Mervis is one of them. He's never given up. He just kept going through sickness, through lack of money, through, um, you know, problems with staff. He just kept going. And that's what business is all about. Doing it, even when you think you can't do it, do it anyway. And he did. And he has. And he still is. When my construction was going on, um, I was kind of in a mood myself and was not really happy with the progress of my salon construction and how fast they were doing whether it was going to be ready when I wanted it to be and I was in kind of a, a mood and Mervis came in to talk to me and we were standing over by the window and I'm ranting and going on and on how unhappy I am about the progress of my salon and he'd been over there trying to figure out just how he was even going to get his barbershop going together with far less funds than I had and I'll never forget it. It was uh, it was just a moment in our relationship that I think at that very moment it changed everything. Because I'm standing there and he's very patient and he's just listening to my ranting. And he said, uh, you'll see, Deb. He said, you'll see. He goes, I'm going to pray for you and you're going to pray for me. And you'll see. It's all going to be good. And at that moment, it was different in our relationship. I saw him very differently than I did from before that. I no longer saw a 21 year old. I saw a man that was 21 with a lot of wisdom and a lot of vision and dream and he was willing to even spiritually be there for somebody else besides himself. When I probably didn't even deserve it to be honest with you. So I, it was a real pivotal moment for me, that one little conversation by the window. And, uh, and then I think you have more clarity on somebody else's dream and realize that he really did have a goal and a dream. I think what I have learned is um, it's important to, it's important in life to not quickly draw, draw conclusions because you miss out on amazing opportunities. One time I did go over there thinking the music was really loud, the bass, and I was very upset and opened up the door. But when I opened up the door, everybody was, it was pretty quiet in there actually. There wasn't hardly, the music wasn't loud at all. And what I realized was there might have been some bass to the music, but it was actually being magnified through our walls for whatever reason. So what I thought was really loud music, or the bass, when I opened up the door, everybody kind of looked at me because it was actually quite quiet, quiet over there. And I thought, okay, well, that was wrong because I was about ready to say, can you turn your music down? And then I realized the music really wasn't that loud. It was really just the vibration coming through. I don't know if it's the pipes in the wall or what, but again, it was a conclusion 
that was wrong. And sometimes it's just not really what you, you only know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. And I, I realized there was a lot I didn't know. And now I do. And I, and you do, it just gives you uh, the opportunity to give people and things a chance. Yeah. I tell people all the time um, with Mervis is that a lot of young people, they see success constantly on TV. They see the cars and the, and the things that come with success and people that are already have arrived. They don't really know what it takes from the bottom all the way to the top of what we consider success. I think Mervis is a success story. I think there's a lot more to come. I really do. I think this is just the beginning for him because he's still young. I think he, I call him the marketeer extraordinaire. I think he could market almost anything. I think he has uh, goals that are like his map. I have always felt that way. He will be successful because he always knows where he's going. I don't think he's ever lost that vision from the day he came in and was standing there looking at that space. I think he has an open heart. I think he has no problem inviting and bringing other people with him in his success and sharing his dream with people. And uh, I really think there is a lot more ahead for him. I really do. I'm thrilled that you're making this video. I hope tons of people see it. I hope it inspires people that don't have two nickels to rub together. You just need somebody to give you a chance. That's it.